just everything. Everything. Every level. Nothing to lose. It's impossible to fight better employees. I don't know. Nothing to lose. It's impossible to fight better employees. I don't know. Stuart Carafa is a card-carrying member of the Democratic Socialists of America. Carafa may look the dull bureaucratic State Department employee with his suit and tie, but make no mistake, this man is a radical who boasts of resistance, socialism, and the abuse of federal work rules. I work for the State Department. Uh, I mean, I'm a civil servant, so like, I'm a union member and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a little problematic. I look at it this way. So now that my, the administration cut my program that I was on, it was a cool like, data analytics program, and we were going to modernize and modernize, democratize, shine sunlight in places where it should be. And they cut it, and now I'm just straight like 8.30 to 5. So it gives me so much more time and like emotional bandwidth to do all this stuff. Karafa is not shy about how he uses his time at work to resist while being paid by the federal government. Instead of... So, so I like, that, I'm going to do DSA work. Yeah, pretty much. You can do, you can do DSA work. Oh, and I, I mean, I do. I'm careful about it. I don't leave a paper trail. Like, I leave email. I need to press. I leave that until after 5.30. But as soon as, like, 5.31, I just got my, like... <laughs> nice. Karafa explains to our journalist that he waits till after official work hours to disseminate DSA-related emails that he had drafted while at work. Karafa thinks this delayed delivery will somehow protect him and his job. You got, you got the work done. What is public record? Yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe someday I'll go to Board of Elections jail. Probably not. U.S. State Department Stuart Carafa is bragging about how he improperly conducts campaign work for DSA during work hours. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I actually dropped out of law school after one year. But Steve Klein here actually graduated from law school. Steve, what is Stuart doing that is illegal? Well, he's committing a fundamental violation of the Hatch Act by engaging in political activity while working for the federal government. And Steve, what is this Hatch Act? Well, the Hatch Act was designed specifically to prevent that kind of activity, to prevent your and my tax dollars from going to subsidize uh, political activity, whether it's Republican, Democrat, or the Democratic Socialists of America. Wow. We guys don't have cam do you guys have cameras like on your cubicles? No, God no. But like, I mean, you can get you could put two and two together probably. Right. Like, it's like web traffic. Karafi is deeply involved in the Democratic Socialist political campaign efforts, both in D.C. and Virginia, as evidenced by his private messages on the DSA internal communications app. With like web traffic and I mean. I could make the case before, like, a court of law that I'm going to the Virginia sort of campaign finance website that I'm just interested in what people are doing politically. Right. But if they also go and look at, like, DSA minutes and like, officer positions, they'd be like, that's weird. You were the coacher in the electoral caucus and you spent three hours on the Virginia, like, campaign finance website. <laughs> So then how do you do it though? How would you do it? Nothing to lose. It's impossible to fight federal employees. I don't know. Like is your supervisor cool with it or she's no enough? Karafa also told our journalist how he gets away with his antics even though he files his required ethics and financial disclosure forms every year, forms that are meant to protect against any conflict of interest. No one knows. But the best part about it is that there's this ethics form that I have to submit every year to mm -hmm. the government because I'm a contracting -like person. Mm -hmm. And on the contracting form, I put all of my like officer positions on it. And yeah. somebody just like... Stamps it and it goes nice. So there is. Uh, so 
it's in a financial disclosure form, right? So if you're involved in federal contracts, you have to disclose the organizations that you're like, if you're like on a board, or if you're a financial officer, so I'm the, the treasurer of my labor So I disclose that. Um, and so like, that's if there's any, you know, f contract stuff that happens in the federal government, they're like, oh, that's f the contract thing with that. If you're on the board of this nonprofit, all of a sudden they get a, Three hundred million dollar contract, and they have three employees. Oh. Um, and that's what it's true. But I can disclose all of my other stuff, and the guy rubber stamping it is just kind of like, uh, I don't know if he's all there. <laughs> he's so checked out. <laughs> he's looking at his stuff like, yeah, whatever, just throw him. Well, and so now I can look back and be like, I don't know, the ethics offer was nowhere what I was doing. So. Carafa wears his DSA sensibilities and values like a badge of honor. Is this everything? Everything. Every level. Yeah. At the same time we were meeting with Carafa, this memo was posted on the Metro DC DSA website, warning their members of Project Veritas and other infiltrators. As we were wrapping up production of this report, we announced on social media the upcoming release. Within hours, the Democratic Socialists of America in D.C. noticed they'd be featured in the story and began ghosting their public profiles. Internal emails and their Slack channels urged members who worked for the federal government to, quote, lock down all social media accounts and activate two-factor authorization on all important accounts, unquote.